Okay, in this video, we're going to be covering um, 4.2, which is uh, the complete finishing of uh, graphing rational functions. So I mentioned in the previous section that we only knew enough information to find the asymptotes. We did not have enough um, information or strategy to actually graph the whole thing ourselves. But in this section, we're going to figure out how to tie up those loose ends and put it all together to be able to actually graph um, a function, okay? So these are the guidelines to solve to graphing rational functions. And these are the guidelines that I'm gonna follow as I work every single problem, okay? So, and I think there's more steps to it. Yes, there are, good. So there's seven steps total. And the first step is one, make sure that you factor the numerator and the denominator if you can and simplify that if possible, okay? Um, you also should talk about your domain before you begin the problem, okay? So I, for me personally, I would have a pre-step and it would be to find the domain. of f of x, just as it is without simplifying it, find that domain, okay? Um, and that's gonna be important later in case you get into certain situations. I don't know if they're gonna come up in this section or in this chapter, but they do come up period when you talk about rational functions. Um, because remember, when you simplify it, you're gonna have canceled out a factor. Now your function can still not equal can still not have a certain X value plugged in. And that X value is the X value that makes the factor that you canceled out equal to zero, okay? Um, so that's why it's important for you to actually find the domain first. Then you wanna simplify it if you can, if not, it's not a big deal. Um, and then you wanna find your Y intercepts by plugging in zero for X. You also want to find your x-intercepts. Um, this, this is a fancy word for x-intercepts. So you want to find your x-intercepts by taking the numerator equal to zero, okay? And then solving. And then step four is to um, find those vertical asymptotes. So any zeros in the denominator. If you've already done step one, then you probably already know. Um, if you did step one and step two, you probably already know the vertical asymptote. Um, and sometimes one of the guys from this pre-step is a vertical asymptote and one of them may not be. It just depends on the scenario and I will explain it if it comes up, okay? Um, so step six, or I'm sorry, step five, is to find and sketch any horizontal asymptotes. And so those we know we get them from comparing the um, degrees, okay? So then step six says plot at least one point between and one point beyond each intercept and vertical asymptote. And again, once we get to the examples, I will explain what that means, okay? And then it says, use smooth curves to complete the graph between and beyond the vertical asymptotes, okay? Sometimes we may need more than one point in between and all of that good stuff, but um, we'll talk about that in just a second when we get to an example. So here's example one. It says, sketch the graph of three over X minus two and state its domain. So for my pre-step, the first thing I would have done is the domain. And so in the domain, you know that your denominator cannot equal zero. So X minus two cannot equal zero, which means X cannot equal two. So what is my domain? My domain is going to be negative infinity to two, and then from two to infinity. Everything but the two, right? Then that next step said for me to find my y-intercept, or no, I'm sorry, it said for me to simplify it, okay, step one, but you can't factor three and you can't factor x minus two. 
So step one um, is actually kind of done already. It's already simplified. Okay, now step two says for us to find the y-intercept and you get that by plugging in zero for y. And so then you end up with three over negative two, which is just negative three halves. So that is my y-intercept, zero that I plugged in for x and then negative three over two that I get for y, okay? Now step three is to find the x-intercept. Remember to do that you have to take your numerator equal to zero and solve. And in this case, my numerator is three, but we know that three does not equal zero, right? And so you don't get any solutions from there. You don't get X equals this or X equals that. So you don't have any X intercepts in this particular graph, okay? Um, so then we move on, oops, what did I do? Then we move on to step four which is to find the vertical asymptotes. And to do that, you take your denominator equal to zero. Um, and in this case, I would take X minus two equal to zero, which turns out to give me the solution X equal to two, okay? So that is my vertical asymptote, which explains why I cannot equal two over here because there's a vertical asymptote there, okay? Then step five is to find the horizontal asymptote. So remember the degree of the numerator, there's no X's in the numerator. So the degree of the numerator is zero and the degree of the denominator, there is an X and its exponent is one. So in this case, our numerator degree is less than our denominator degree, which means that the horizontal asymptote is automatically at Y equal to zero, okay? So I've got a vertical asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, and a y-intercept so far. And that's all I've got. I still need to do step six, which is the more complicated one, okay? So what we would have done on the graph, and I'm gonna do this on my own because they just have the answer there and it's like, where did it come from, right? And why did you create this chart? So if I mark my um, vertical asymptote at x equal to two, it's the same vertical asymptote that they have here, okay? Then I'm gonna mark my horizontal asymptote, which is y equals to zero, which means it's on top of the x-axis, okay? So that's the horizontal asymptote. Now you can't really see it, and they never really draw it on top of the y-axis, or I'm sorry, the x-axis, but it is there, okay? Then what they do, is they marked the y-intercept. So the y-intercept was zero and negative three halves. So that's negative one and a half. So that would be negative one and a half would be about right there. So that's the y-intercept. And we did not have any x-intercepts, okay? So you do have this one point here. Now that helps me because I know that, um, my end is going to trail off toward this. And I know and I know that I can't touch the x-axis, right? Because we had no x-intercepts. So I cannot touch the x-axis. That gives me no choice but then to go close to the horizontal asymptote. Same thing here. I can never cross a vertical asymptote, which gives me no choice but to go downward in that direction, okay? And so now this has created this little parabola, okay? Which is the same thing that they have there. Now, I didn't need any extra points to figure that out. I just used my logic and the information that I knew about the x-intercepts and the information I knew about the asymptotes. That's it, and that's all I needed. I have a value to the left of my um, asymptote. But what I don't have is anything to the right of the asymptote. So I don't know if the other curve is going downward as well or if it's going upward. I don't know that based off the information I have. So this is why you would have to plug in another number, like maybe three and figure out what the Y value is. And so if I go to that function three over X minus two, I'm gonna plug in the X value three minus two. I get three over one or just three. So that means at one, two, three, there's a point there at three comma three. Okay, then that gives me all the information I need because 
I know that this now will go in this direction because it's up here and this will go in that direction eventually, okay? Um, and so we have our graph here, okay? And that's all we need. We don't need so many points like they do. All you need to know is where is the picture down here or up here? Is it on the left? Here's your inner asymptote. To the left of the asymptote, is the graph at the bottom below the horizontal asymptote or is it above the horizontal asymptote? And then figure out what's going on on the right side. Is the graph below the, the horizontal asymptote or above the horizontal asymptote? Okay. Now, there are other asymptotes. Um, there's another asymptote called a slant asymptote. Because so far, all they told you is how to find the verticals, right? So verticals are found by taking your denominator equal to zero. And we know horizontal asymptotes happen when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, or when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. However, it told us that if the degree of the denominator was greater than, then there was no horizontal asymptote. What they left out is that there is actually possibly an asymptote. It's just not a horizontal one, okay? And the other kind is a, an, a, a slant asymptote. Now, this one's very particular though, okay? So the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator. So yes, in this case, the degree of the denominator is bigger than the, than the denominator. The numerator is bigger than the denominator, but by exactly one. So for instance, if I had x cubed over x minus one, this does not have a slant asymptote because the degree here is three, the degree here is one, and that's more than one difference. Whereas if I had x squared, over x minus one. Here the degree is two, here the degree is an invisible one, and so it is bigger by exactly one, okay? And how do you find that slant asymptote? You actually have to perform long division in order to find that asymptote. So it's not as easy to find as some of the, um, as the vertical and the horizontal asymptote, okay? So they give you an example here. Remember the degree is the highest exponent. So in this case, the degree of the numerator is equal to two. And then the degree of the denominator is equal to one. And the numerator is bigger than the denominator by exactly one number. And so then it says, make sure you use long division to figure it out. Now let's do long division. If I put X plus one on the inside or on the outside and put X squared minus X on the inside. Remember the process. You take the first one on the inside and divide it by the first one on the outside. And so we just get X and that X is going to go here. Then that gets distributed. So I get X squared plus X and then I have to change the sign. So this becomes a negative, this becomes a negative. Now X squared minus X squared cancels, but negative X minus X is negative two X. And so then now I'm going to take the first guy in here divided by the first guy out there and I get negative two this time. So that negative two goes there. Then I'm gonna take this negative two and distribute it to the X and the one. So I get negative two X and negative two. Then I'm gonna change this to a plus and I'm gonna change this to a plus and those will cancel and I'll just get positive two. Now you can't do it anymore because you cannot take two and divide it by X. It just doesn't simplify, okay? So you're done. But how do you write that? You take this part up here as your quotient, right? So it's your quotient plus your remainder over your divisor. Remember, this is the divisor. So how does that get written? It gets written as the X minus two that we had up top plus the remainder two over the divisor X plus one, okay? Now, I don't really care about the numerator when we're trying to find the slap, slap asymptote. All you care about is this quotient part, that is your slant asymptote. So if you notice, here's negative two Y intercept, and then if you go up one and over one, you get the second point of that a slant asymptote. 
So now example two says for us to sketch this graph, okay, and state its domain. So the first step that I do is my pre-step and I talk about that domain, okay? And in this case, we know that your denominator cannot equal zero. So X minus one cannot equal zero, which means X cannot equal one. So what is my domain? My domain is negative infinity to one and then from one to infinity, okay? Now, step one though, is to simplify it. So you can actually factor this. And when I factor it, I get X minus two and X plus one, but nothing cancels. So it doesn't um, necessarily simplify, okay? So this one does not simplify. But having it in this factored version is super helpful, okay? So in order for me to do step two, which is to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, I'm sorry, we're going to use, um, oh, what did they do? No, I wouldn't use this version. I would use the factored version they got. They're just leaving this here from the long division that we wrote earlier. Oh, no, they're not. They did long division. This is a completely different problem. Um, ew, it has to be simplified. So you have to perform long division when your top exponent is larger. So I have to do the long division. I don't even have an option at all. I have to do long division. So let's go do the long division. You have your denominator and then you have your numerator. If I take X squared, divided by x, I get x. So x goes here and then it gets distributed. And then I change the signs. And so then they both cancel and you bring down the negative two. But negative two and x does not simplify. So what do we get? We get x for the quotient and then we get minus two. So that's why it has minus two over the divisor, okay? And so that's where they get this simplified version from. Now, if I'm finding the y-intercept, I'm just gonna plug in zero for x. And so we end up with negative two over negative one, which is just two. So we plugged in zero for x and we got two for y. So that's my y-intercept. My x-intercepts come from taking my numerator equal to zero. Now you already factored this, so you already know what it's gonna factor into when you tried to simplify it. So then I get X equals to positive two and X equals to negative one. And so those are my two intercepts. When X is negative one, the Y was zero. When X is two, the Y is zero. Those are my two X intercepts. Then step four is to do my vertical asymptote. So remember you're taking your denominator equal to zero. In this case, x minus one equals to zero, which gives me the equation x equals to one. Then for step, um, where did my mouse go? Oh, anyway. Um, so we know that when we did the long division, we got this, right? So this right here is my slant asymptote. Right, whatever we got up top is our slant asymptote. So let's think about this when I'm graphing, okay? You've got the line x equal to one. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So when x equals to one, we have this vertical asymptote. When y equals x, we have a slant asymptote. So zero, zero, one, one, two, two, so on and so forth. So we have this line that's slant asymptote. Now we do have a y-intercept of zero and two, and we do have two x-intercepts, negative one and zero, and two and zero. So right here. So I don't really need anything 
any extra points. I don't need these additional extra points at all. I already have these two points, so I already know what's happening. This one's going this way because it can't touch the vertical asymptote. And then this one's gonna go this way, trailing closer to that uh, slant asymptote. This one also, you can't cross the vertical uh, asymptote. So it has no choice but to go downward. And then this one's going upward, obviously. And so it has to trail off toward that slant asymptote. And so I do get the same exact image as they do, okay? And I did not need to plug in any points to get more values to graph this. Um, it had enough with just the information I was given, okay? You just have to have two points on each side of your asymptotes and your x-intercept. So notice that I already have a point on the left and I have a point on the right. So my asymptote is covered. And then I even have a point over here um, to the right of my x-intercept. I don't have a point to the left of my x-intercept. So if I wanted to, I could plug in negative two. And when you do, apparently you get negative 1.3. And so that's about that point right there. Okay, and then that would be enough to, to graph it. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get to our practice problems. Now, I think that there were four pages of this stuff. So let me see, yeah. So this should be one out of four. Now we're gonna try to work on this. So we're gonna follow all of those steps and we're gonna do everything that they ask us to do. So notice that the first thing they ask us to do is state that domain. So we know for domain, um, your denominator cannot equal zero. So in this case, X plus three cannot equal zero. Um, and then that means that X cannot equal negative three. So my domain, is going to be negative infinity to negative three, union negative three to infinity. That is my domain. So A has been done. Now for part B, it says identify all the intercepts. So for B, the y-intercept we get by plugging in zero for x. So we get five over three, which is about 1.6 repeating, or it is 1.6 repeating. And so we get um, zero for X and then five thirds for Y. But for me to draw it, I know it's about 1.6. Then for my X intercepts, we get those by taking the numerator equal to zero. So in this case, three X plus five equal to zero. Um, and I get three X equal to negative five, and then I get X equals to negative five thirds, which is about negative 1.6 repeating. So here I got negative 1.6 or negative five thirds for X. And since I set the whole thing equal to zero, it's zero for Y. Okay. So that's the intercept. So we've done the intercepts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find um, all asymptotes. Okay, great. So for asymptotes, we're going to do the degrees. So this cannot be factored and this cannot be factored. So I can't simplify it at all. So I'm just going to go straight into the degree of the numerator that exponent would be one. And then the degree of the denominator is also one. So in this case, they are equivalent to each other. When they are equivalent to each other, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So in this case, that means the coefficient uh, three over the coefficient invisible one. So I have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to three. Now for the vertical asymptote, we're gonna take our denominator equal to zero. So x plus three equals to zero, which means x equals negative three. So I do have both a vertical and a horizontal asymptote. 
So I have done step C. Then um, step D says for me to plot additional points if necessary. So I don't need know if I'm gonna need um, additional points. So I'm just gonna leave this here for now, but I am gonna try to graph um, this function. So let me go onto another sheet of paper and we'll use that information. I think I might need to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, I'm not using graph paper, so I mean, it, it is what it is. So let's see, um, A, there's really nothing to graph. Just make sure that that's my domain, right? B, I'm gonna graph the point zero and 1.6. So about right there for my y-intercept, this point. Now for my x-intercept, it's actually negative 1.6 and zero, okay? Then I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals three. So one, two, three. So we've got this horizontal asymptote here. And I've got a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. So I do have enough information to the right of my vertical asymptote, okay? I have enough information to figure out what's going on to the right of this vertical asymptote. Obviously, I'm not up here, I'm down here. So if I connect the dots, this is gonna go in that direction and then this is gonna go in this direction, okay? What I am missing is some information on whether the rest of the graph is also down here or if it's up there at the top, okay? And so for that, I do need to find some extra points. So we definitely need to have two more points on this side. So if this is negative three, I'm gonna try negative four and negative five. So for part D, um, we're going to make a chart and we're going to plug in negative four for X and negative five for X. And so let's see what we get there. Um, if I plug in fraction, three parentheses, negative four plus five over negative four plus three, I get the Y value seven. Now, if I go back in there and I plug in negative five instead, I get the Y value five. So now I know that there's two more points, one at negative four and seven, which is like way up there off of my paper because I didn't do it that big. And then negative five and five. So it's going to go up in that direction and then off to the side in this direction. I, 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 if I had more paper like that, this thing should be going upward, right? And it's not going to pass that vertical asymptote, okay? Um, and so you get that image there. Now let's try another one. So now here it says practice two. So again, two of so now it's telling me to consider this function. So if I state the domain, remember your denominator cannot equal zero. So in this case, x squared minus four cannot equal zero, which means x squared cannot equal four, which means x cannot equal plus or minus two if I take the square root of both sides. So then that means my domain is going to be negative infinity to negative two, from negative two to two, and then from two to infinity. Everything from negative infinity to positive infinity, just not the negative two and not the positive two. Those have been removed. That's why there's parentheses, okay? Then um, that's part A. Part B says for us to identify any intercepts. So if I wanna find the y-intercepts, I'm just plugging in zero for x. I get zero over negative four, which is just zero. So my intercept is zero for x and zero for y. Now my x-intercepts I get by taking the numerator equal to zero. In this case, x equal to zero. 
So I get zero for X and zero for Y because I set the thing equal to zero. And so it's the same point really, okay? So there's really only one point I got from all that. Now for the asymptotes, um, the degree of the numerator is actually one and the degree of the denominator is two. So my degree of my numerator is less than the degree of my denominator, which means my horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero automatically, which is the x-axis, okay? Then I'm gonna take my denominator and I'm gonna equal it to zero to find the vertical asymptotes. So I get x squared minus four equal to zero. Essentially, you're doing the same thing here. So you get x equals plus or minus two, which means I have two vertical asymptotes. Okay, so you have two vertical asymptotes. And then I won't know if I'm needing any more extra information until I graph this. So bear with me. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So let's see what we got here. We know we have the y intercept and x intercept zero, zero. We know we have a horizontal asymptote on top of the x axis. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two and at x equals positive two. Okay. And that's it. That's all I've got so far. So that is definitely not enough. So I am going to have to create a chart. Um, and when I create this chart, I need to find, I need to find at least two points over here to the left, okay? Or really just one, because if I know that it's up here, then I know it'll go like that. And I know if it's down here, it'll go like this, okay? So I really just need one value for the left part. And that's, if that's negative two, I'm gonna plug in negative three for X. Now, in between, I need to know whether this half is going up or going down, and I need to know whether this half is going up or going down. So I actually need to plug in both of those x values, negative one and positive one. And then I also need another point up here so I could know if it's positive, the graph will go like that, but if it's negative y, it'll go down, okay? So I'm also going to need another x coordinate, maybe positive three. So I'm going to plug all of those into the original equation. So negative three over, oops, negative three squared minus four. And I get um, negative three fifths, which is uh, negative 0 0.6. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna plug in negative one. I didn't want that negative in the front. It should have been in the top but I don't think it makes a difference. I still get the same answer. But now I'm gonna plug in negative one in the top and negative one downstairs. And I get one third, which is about 0 0.3 positive. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna delete the negatives because now I'm plugging in positive one. And I get negative one third which is about negative 0 0.3. And then let's go back and plug in positive three for x and we get positive three fifths. So it's positive 0 0.06. So let's graph all of those points and see what they look like. So at negative three, I have negative 0.6, which is about right there. At negative one, I have 0 0.3, which is about right here. Then positive one and negative 0 0.3 is about right there. And positive three and 0 0.6 is about right here. And so now we can kind of see where the graph is going. So it's going upward to the left of this x, y intercept. It's going downward to the right of the xy intercept. And then on this side, it's up above the horizontal asymptote. So it'll go toward the asymptote there and go toward the asymptote here. 
And then to the left, it's gonna go toward the asymptote there and go toward the asymptote here, okay? And then this is the graph of the function, or it's a sketch of the function. Okay, let's now keep going. We're gonna go to our third example. So in our third example, it again is asking us the same stuff. It's they're just changing the functions, okay? So it says for us to first state the domain. Well, we know that the denominator cannot equal zero. So X cannot equal zero, which means that the domain is negative infinity to zero and then from zero to positive infinity, okay? And then for me to find the intercepts, I'm gonna plug in zero for X. Oh, but then that's undefined. Three over zero is undefined, which means there's no Y intercept. But when I go to find the X intercepts, I'm gonna take my numerator equal to zero, which if I minus three, I get X squared equal to negative three. And if I take the square root, I get plus or minus the square root of negative three, which I know is imaginary. So now I know I have no X intercepts. So great, no points. <laughs> Probably gonna need a chart for this one, okay? Um, then find all my inter in, uh, asymptotes. So the degree of the numerator is actually two and the degree of the denominator is one. And so the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator by exactly one. What does that mean? That means I have a slant asymptote. You also might see the word oblique. It's the same thing. It's just two different names for the same thing. Some books call it an oblique asymptote and some books call it a slant asymptote. How do we find it? We have to do the long division. So we're going to do x into x squared. I do not have any x's, so I need to fill in that empty spot and then my constant, okay? So x squared divided by x is x. And then x times x is x squared. Um, and then you would change the sign so this becomes negative. Then that cancels. I would bring down 0x. 0x divided by 0 is just 0, I'm sorry, 0x divided by x, this guy divided by that guy is 0. So you don't even need to write anything. Um, but if you did, 0 times x is 0x, and then you bring down the 3. So if I change this sign and I change this sign, I just get negative 3. And you cannot do negative 3 divided by x, it doesn't simplify. So my slant asymptote is going to be at y equals whatever's up there, x plus zero, or just y equals x, because x plus zero is just x, right? Okay, and then now we might need to create a table. So I'm not sure what numbers we need in our table, but I'm pretty sure we need some numbers because we have no points, okay? So let me draw this real quick. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so y equals to x, and I forgot to do my vertical asymptote. Okay, so for my vertical asymptote, I completely forgot about it, but I would take my denominator equal to zero which means x equals to one is my vertical asymptote. So the, what does that mean? That means when x is equal to zero, I have a vertical asymptote. So it's actually on top of the y-axis, okay? So that's all I've got. I don't have any points at all. So I definitely need one on this side to figure out what the graph is gonna do. And then I definitely need one on this side to see what the graph is gonna do. So I would plug in negative one and negative two. I'm gonna put two of them on this side so I can figure out what's happening. Um, I know I don't have any x-intercepts, so I'm pretty sure the graph is gonna be down here um, because I can't be right here. Otherwise I'd have an x-intercept and I don't have any x-intercepts. 
So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be down there, but where exactly, I don't know, which is why I'm gonna plug in those two numbers. Same thing here. I know it's not gonna be here because then that would require me to have an x-intercept. So I'm pretty sure the graph is gonna be up in here, but how high is it gonna start up there? Is it gonna start like right here? I don't know. So I need to plug in positive one and positive two. And so let's see. Um, I'm going to do x squared plus three over x. Okay, let me do my first number. Negative one stores x and then fraction x squared plus three over x. So when I plug in negative one, I get negative four. When I plug in negative two, I get negative seven halves, which is negative 3.5. Now when I plug in one, I get positive four. And when I plug in two, I get positive seven halves or positive 3.5. So let's go see. Negative one and negative one, two, three, four negative two and negative one, two, three and a half. So then that does help me. I can tell that this is going in this direction and this is going downward there. And I know where it is now. I know it doesn't go all the way up in there. It's just right here. Now for positive one and positive four, positive two and positive 3.5, now I also know what's going on over here going that way and then this way because it cannot cross over this slant asymptote okay and so then we have our image here and that's it now let's see our last example which is actually number four out of four now we have this problem to to try to graph Okay, and I do think that that is a different one than the ones we've done. I just want to be sure. Yep, it is. Okay, so again, if I do my domain, I know my denominator cannot equal zero. So x minus three cannot equal zero, which means that x cannot equal three. So my domain is um, negative infinity to three, and then from three to infinity. Now, the intercepts, I'm going to take my zero and plug it in. I get negative one over negative three, which is one third. So I get zero for X and one third for Y. Then for my X intercepts, I'm gonna take my numerator equal to zero. I get three X equals one, X equals one third. So X is one third and Y is zero this time. It's just coincidence that they're the same. Um, and then find my asymptotes. So the degree of the numerator is one. The degree of the denominator is also one. So the horizontal asymptote is at Y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator, which is three, and the leading coefficient of the denominator, which is an invisible one. So I just get y equal to three. And then for the vertical asymptote, I take the domain denominator equal to zero. So x equals three is my, um, <clears throat> my um, vertical asymptote. So then now let's look at what we've got here. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So we've got, what do we've got? We've got the point zero and one third. So it's about right here for my y-intercept. We have one third and zero, which is about right here for my x-intercept. And I don't want that in red, so I'm just gonna fill that in in blue. But those are the X and Y intercepts. Now my horizontal asymptote is at Y equal to three. And my vertical asymptote is also at, but at X equal to three. 
So you remember there's four regions that are created, right? Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. I already know what's happening in my graph on the left side of this asymptote. I've got these points here, which means I'm gonna go downward that way and I'm gonna go this way, okay? I already know that that's going to happen. But what I don't know is what's happening over here on this side. So I'm gonna have to create a table and plug in some numbers like four and five. And so let's see what we get. Three, let's go. Three times four minus one over four minus three. I get um, 11. And then when I plug in five, I get seven. So that means I have at four, and what did I do? I went up to five, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that means at four and 11, I have a point. And then at five and seven. So three, four, five, six, seven. So about right there. Well, then that's pretty obvious, right? If my asymptote is still going up, you've got this part going up there and then this part going down that way toward your horizontal asymptote over here somewhere, okay? And so that is the last um, graph, the last problem for this section. So hopefully putting all of that information together, finding your domain, finding your intercepts, finding your asymptotes, and then looking to see, draw what you've got and see what else you need to fill in the rest of the graph. Okay, um, but other than that, that is the end of this section.